Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jess Lenore in Baltimore. Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper has made no secret of his staunch support of Israel. Canadian Foreign Affairs Minister John Baird recently said that he's, quote, deeply skeptical of the recently brokered nuclear deal with Iran. And despite the fact the U.S. is easing some sanctions against Iran, Canadian sanctions will remain in full force. Now joining us to discuss this is Eve Angler, He's a Canadian commentator and author. His most recent book is The Ugly Canadian, Stephen Harper's Foreign Policy. Previously, he published The Black Book of Canadian Foreign Policy and Canada and Haiti, Waging War on the Poor Majority. Thank you so much for joining us again. Thanks for having me. What can you tell us about Canada's position? It's pretty much following Israel's line, kind of toe, um, as strongly as possible, and not even kind of giving this historic moment uh, a chance to work. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, unprecedented, uh, I think, in the history of Canadian foreign policy, where the Canadian government is uh, offside with uh, not only Washington, but London, Paris, even, uh, to some extent, and other powers, uh, global powers, um, in uh, opposing uh, this attempt to uh, to bring some uh, uh, sort of a cool down period, and they're basically following the position of uh, of the Israeli right and the, the neocon right in the U.S. and are um, continuing with the belligerence and and really, uh, as far as I understand, actually the only country aside from Israel that has come out uh, and uh, and been quite strongly critical of uh, of this agreement between the uh, uh, the major powers and and Iran. So what is Canada's motivation to, for um, its opposition? You know, we, we've reported how France helped torpedo the deal, and they have close economic ties with Saudi Arabia and Israel, um, which, you know, may be a big reason why, why France helped torpedo the, the preliminary deal. What is driving Canada's uh, foreign policy right now? Well, I think the, the conservatives have, have shown themselves to be very belligerent uh, across the board uh, from, you know, antagonism to United Nations climate negotiations to being ardent supporter of Israel uh, in basically every situation the Harper government has come out in favor of Israel. Um, uh, from, you know, Israel's bombing of Lebanon 2006, the bombing of Gaza a couple of years later. Uh, and so I think this is in a large part this this an extension of this pro-Israel policy, uh, uh, which is tied into their sort of vision, as uh, uh, Harper uh, put it uh, a couple of days ago to the Jewish National Fund uh, uh, fundraiser in uh, in Toronto. Uh, he referred to Israel as a bulwark against the uh, against uh, in a, a, a bulwark of lightness in a dark region. Uh, i.e. I .e. that area, the Arab, Arab world, uh, uh, the Middle East. Uh, um, so, so he sees this, he sees this issue from this very uh, kind of hard line, um, well, one you could call racist, but also just sort of Western geostrategic uh, interest. And he's uh, been a strong proponent of, of advancing uh, uh, Western uh, interests in the Middle East and, and often, you know, even through a militaristic means. Uh, alongside that, uh, ironically, they've also uh, deepened Canadian ties to uh, uh, to the monarchies, uh, particularly with regards to Saudi Arabia, uh, significantly increased Canadian weapon sales to Saudi Arabia. So, uh, of course, Saudi Arabia, after Israel, is probably the next most um, uh, opposed major uh, a player against this against this agreement. Um, so I think the conservatives have have uh, have uh, have a number of reasons. They're also obviously very tied. They want to you know replicate a sort of uh, George Bush Republican um, kind of model in Canada. That's sort of their 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 political uh, uh, vision. So I think they have um, they have a series of uh, motivations to uh, to oppose this and to to, to be critical. Um, but I think it, most importantly is their uh, strong uh, and complete uh, endorsement and support for, for Israeli policy. So it would uh, seem that Canada is sort of taking the position that France took that um, well, as Saudi Arabia came out when this deal was signed and said they may reconsider their, their relationship with the U.S. Now, it is a pretty major relationship with billions of dollars, or tens of billions of dollars in trade agreements between Saudi Arabia and the U.S. So you think that 
um, Canada might also be kind of vying for increased market in the Saudi arms uh, weapons market. For, well, for sure, they've been they've been very active at a, a number of different uh, lobbying missions that the, the federal government has sent to uh, Saudi Arabia and to some of the other monarchies in the region uh, to boost uh, uh, economic ties, specifically weapons. Uh, the main the main export Canada has to uh, Saudi Arabia is uh, light armored vehicles uh, that the Saudi monarchy used to uh, to put down the uh, the pro democracy movement in in Bahrain. Um, so I think there's no doubt that um, that Ottawa is uh, is close uh, to uh, to the Saudi monarchy and has. Uh, you know, he certainly hears their opinion on this agreement with uh, with Iran, and as I said, uh, the Saudi monarchy is uh, is uh, sees Iran as a major threat. Uh, Iran's uh, you know influence in, in in across the region, particularly in Iraq, uh, is something that uh, that the Saudis are have been quite hostile to. Um, so all the rhetoric that the the conservatives uh, put out in the you know recent days put out. A, the foreign affairs minister a couple of days ago put out a statement sort of talking about human rights and we can't forget about human rights in Iran. Um, uh, and there's no doubt there's lots of, you know, human rights issues in Iran. Um, um, but if you compare the human rights situation in Iran and you compare the, the plight of women in Iran to, uh, to the situation in Saudi Arabia, um, Iran looks like a bastion of democracy and looks like a bastion of feminism. Um, so, so there's a, the, the hypocrisy and the double standards are, are really clear uh, when you look at their uh, their their ties to Saudi Arabia. This is not the conservatives' hostility to Iran is not about any human rights question. It's about um, Iran not following the orders of uh, of the empire and and being seen as a threat to uh, to Israel's um, and Washington's control of uh, of control of the region. Now, some commentators have. Um have looked at Israel's approach, its complete rejectionist approach to this deal, and it's not that off, it's not that far from its previous positions really, but now Israel seems so at odds with the rest of the international community that Israel might lose some of its influence in the future of the Middle East even, and that might, may be a bit of a, that will, it remains to be seen if that will be true, but do you think with Canada adopting Israel's position, that Canada too may end up losing some standing in the international community? And what has the response been in Canada itself? There's no doubt. I, I mean, I've, I've received some calls about, uh, you know, from international media outlets um, on this question of, of, you know, Canada stands out as, as, as alongside Israel. It's really the only country that's publicly criticized, even Saudi Arabia, uh, after the agreement came out, their their comment was, you know, while we know that behind the scenes they're critical, publicly they're saying sort of, uh, you know, sort of basically going along with it. Um, so there is definitely international interest in in Canada's uh, position, uh, and uh, and so I think it does it definitely does harm uh, um, Canada's standing uh, globally. And it, it, once again, uh, just like at a you know, number of climate negotiation meetings at different arms control meetings, this, this, the current conservative government is seen as, uh, you know, offside with international opinion is really defending, um, sort of the most reactionary kind of, uh, kind of, uh, position. Um, and so that comes back internally and there's been quite a bit of commentary from sort of liberal minded, uh, uh, media um, people sort of criticizing um, the the conservative government's position, but but they're not. Um, most of that criticism doesn't go very far. I mean, this is not. This is just the latest in a long-standing campaign the Canadian government has had against Iran. What, what I call a low-level war against Iran. That's included the the, san the sanctions, which is designed to you know harm Iran's economy. Uh, is included. Uh, uh, Canadian naval vessels patrolling off the coast of Iran, Canadian troops being occu occupying Afghanistan, and and there's some sense of their involvement in in in, um, in spying and and sort of uh, uh, you know keeping track of Iran. Um, uh, you know, a whole a whole series of uh, you know funding groups, opposition groups in Iran, and on and on and on. So this is a long-standing policy of the Harper government to to try to weaken Iran. Um, it's done under the guise that Iran is you know possibly building nuclear weapons. In reality, when the International Atomic Energy Agency asks uh, uh, Israel to bring its 
known nuclear weapons program under IA, IAEA controls. The Harper government has abstained or opposed uh, those efforts. So clearly they don't have a particularly big problem with nuclear weapons. They have, uh, you know, obviously Washington has the biggest nuclear weapon stockpile in the world. Uh, and the Harper government has little problem with that, little problem with Israel's nuclear weapons. Um, so the, the, there has been some mild criticism of the recent comments of, of, the, of the Harper government. Um, but uh, there hasn't been much that's gone sort of deeper in saying, uh, who, why do we have a right uh, to tell Iran uh, uh, not to build a nuclear weapon while we you know, support our allies' uh, uh, nuclear weapons program? There's been uh, fairly little in terms of a more thorough critique of, uh, of uh, the conservatives' policy vis-a-vis -vis Iran. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. You can follow us on Twitter, at The Real News. Tweet me questions and story ideas at Jessel Noor. I'll also be posting questions for our viewers there as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm.